I tell you, can't you turn privacy into something good instead? That's an excellent question. I mean, a lot of companies have done already the work since the 25th of May. You have always had different kind of cu customer segmentations in the sense that you have uh, like internal customer, external customers. One of the new things that I think is going to be in the future is that you have what's called subcultures within those customers. A typical example would be if I go and buy uh, a pair of sneakers in a shoe company. You have one type of customer that is very advocate about talking the fact and posting on every kind of sort of social media that they bought these sneakers. Mm -hmm. That's an extrovert kind of personal customer. Is privacy important for you? In pri privacy is actually somewhat of uh, importance to me in my daily life and it should be in everyday life. So it has become uh, a very important issue, yes. But why? How important is privacy for you? Yes. Uh, I would say it's somewhere between quite important and very important, depending if I'm my private citizen or if I'm at my work. Uh, when we look at my work, I'm more or less a public person. Uh, I speak a lot, I do speeches as uh, customers and everything. So from that point of view, I expose a lot of my life, or I would say a lot of my work life. Privacy is actually the glue that, that combines the digitization that we actually experience right now. The development in, uh, of Internet of Things has become uh, an everyday life. And privacy as such is what's combining security and everything that has to follow that, that development. How much is privacy worth for you? Privacy is actually a very hard question to ask, just to put a value on it. Um, to actually put a number is impossible, but it's worth, uh, to me, everything in the future if we want to develop digitization and an internet of things that is viable, incredible, seen from a, a, a human perspective. So it's very hard to put a number on it, but privacy is everything, and it's a matter of opinion to everyone what privacy is worth to them. To core businesses, it's worth uh, alive or death, actually. And the other one purchases the same sneakers, but it's very secluded, doesn't want anyone to know that it's going to start running and it's going to be embarrassing. That is the new way of thinking in the economy, to produce a services that caters, that enforces the extroverts, and protects the introverts. That, in my opinion, is the best practice on going forwards with privacy. As a private person, however, I'm a lot secluded. I've, I participate in quite a bit in social media, just to understand how it works, but I'm dwelling very little on my life there, uh, because I'm, I've seen so many persons that actually are fall, falling ill. They, are, they become dependent on social media. So you can, you can uh, enhance the experience for those who want to be extroverted and you can enhance the experience for them, those who want to be private. Excellent. Looking at the value, how much would it cost for them to have me share my inner workings in their, their platform? I would say a lot. They have already have a DPO that is a lawyer. Uh, she is an expert on understanding these subcultures and has their enterprise architectural meetings. Uh, they always put in what they call an integrity analysis as part of a due diligence before they produce a new services. Let's say that you actually going into the store and by walking into a specific sports store, I am actually accepting when I pass the gates that I am going to be uh, targeted for product placement and so on. And that is, that is in a way the same thing as when you walk into Facebook. If I sign up an account on Facebook, I do need to understand that I'm going to be a target audience for certain advertising and somewhat other companies. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lack of a crystal clear and cognitive clear consent to what, I'm, to what I am going to be exposed to. And I don't see in Generation Z, for instance, the millennial, that they really do understand. 
So the law is all about protecting the privacy of people. In a way, you're absolutely right. That's what the law has intended. But from a company point of view, it's about protecting their brand. Uh, let's say, an example, that you produce this sneaker sort of example, and you always automatically get redirected to a Facebook page whenever you make a purchase. That will stay away, and the, the, the person that wants to be protected will not feel comfortable in those surroundings and will direct something that will afflict your brand. You wouldn't sign up to Facebook for their research for $20 a month? Absolutely not. Uh, not there is something to, if they want to see where I am, uh, what type of browsing habits I have, because that's monitored a lot already. But, but when we're looking at actually give them all my information, almost my inner thoughts, I would never ever do that. Uh, the challenge is here that a lot of applications actually start monitoring a lot of what you do, and you could actually from there, that deduct a person's inner working. We, we've seen that already with apps that take control of other apps, ad systems and information collection and collects that. They're not allowed to do it, but they still do it. And so, so, so they're uh, just by seeing like a share button, they're feeling like, ah, my privacy is at risk here. Excellent example again. Uh, there is a, a European court uh, sort of judgment that came a year ago, I believe, where uh, how far do you take the, the intention of a personal style stuff here and uh, to click one of those like buttons, is that enough? And what the court said is that as long as you have that the, the correct intention behind the user is that you want to expose yourself, then you have given as a sort of a condition that you are okay with the fact that I can be uh, related with this Facebook page. But if you just like something from the likelihood of it, then you should be protected for it. No, 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 that's, that's not what I meant. I meant that, that you're in this uh, e-commerce site and, yes. and you want to buy something, and, and, and you're a private person uh, mm -hmm. and you want to be protected and there's like 10, 20 buttons for sharing and, and so on. Ah, and you okay. go like, ah, oh, I wonder if this site is safe. You, you have, I know that you have children. How do they think about privacy? Uh, they are, it, it actually depends. Uh, they're not that active on social media from that point of view. They are sharing pictures from home. Uh, to their friends. Uh, normally, you know, uh, younger girls show all those uh, duck face pictures. It's very popular. Uh, my sons normally share photos when they're playing games. Uh, one of my daughters do that more as well. She doesn't share pictures of herself. Uh, we have quite often discussions about social media and privacy at home. And uh, I'm my hope is that they have actually listened to us elder, but as they are teenagers, they probably don't listen. Uh, but I don't see that they share a lot of information, mainly because they have closer, closer contact with their friends in real life, rather than just relying on social media. You're absolutely right. That's again, perception. That's what it's down to. Perception and security are two very different interesting. Uh, there's a lot of sort of theories around this. Uh, one of them is uh, that uh, security is not about the actual security. It's more about your prevention, your perception of how secure things are. In the real world, mm -hmm. if you go into a shop, then you know physical attributes like the, the, the shopping place, the, the surrounding, they'll give you what's called symbolical gestures around your sort of faith to the public. Whereas mm -hmm. on a web page, they become very fussy. And you're right, many sort of uh, buttons about uh, sharing stuff could create the illusion that this company won't treat my personal data in a proper way. What actually backs my statements here is how many of the generation, the young generation, actually read the, 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 the agreement terms for an app or whatever. Um, they don't. And, 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 and frankly, the grown-ups or the generation X and Y doesn't either. Um, you so read it? I read it all the time. <laughs> actually, I do. And more so um, as my career in cybersecurity and the digital security progresses. because. The company is getting more and more uh, sinister, if you will, uh, somewhat uh, ominous uh, word, but they're getting more sinister and clever how to interpret and, and phrase themselves, paraphrasing them. So um, in perspective of that, GDPR has the aim and scope of actually 
making the consent more clear, um, and that the subject have um, a, a very increased power over their own information mm -hmm. and such. But again, the social media platform's main objective is to actually connect the world and share information. What's your experience about companies who they think of privacy? Uh, yes and no. Uh, they think of privacy due, due to GDPR. And that's the main reason why they will actually focus on it. Otherwise, what, what we see, look, looking back, uh, let's say 20 years now, uh, we had uh, a lot of people using credit card, and companies took the credit card number as an identifier of the, the purchase patterns. So this habit, companies want to know their customers and know what they're purchasing. It was easy to do that with credit card numbers. Then came PCI, and all of the companies were forced to remove credit card numbers. So what we saw then was the emerge of customer clubs where you get points for logging in and do your purchases. So, and that's actually the new way of collecting information. And then that, that exploded, so you have to give out your shoe size to be able to ship something not even connected to shoes, and all of that other type of information, and hence came GDPR. Uh, what happened before GDPR was that companies didn't take IT security in, a, they actually didn't do it in the way they should do. They did it for PCI, so the payment card system, but very seldom for the rest of it. So there was a lot of hacks going on, a lot of customers lost information, hence come GDPR. So now we actually uh, they are, we have enforcement on security nowadays. Mm. So, so I, I think one of the, the real strengths of GDPR is that makes Europe very competitive for data processing. So I've been talking with, with uh, companies and governments outside of Europe where they say, well, we want to store the data in Europe because then our consumers can trust that the data protection is to the highest standard. Uh, that's exactly where I was talking before, that uh, the brand from companies uh, is now concerning the privacy. And we have all sorts of uh, discussions around this. Uh, the best one is the, uh, the Analytica. Uh, Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. Uh, but I would say most companies wouldn't give a damn about privacy if they weren't forced to it because it's, it adds cost. And if you are in a business model that where you really have to focus on costs, privacy is the first to go. Could we look at privacy as something like pollution, that you don't care about it until a huge number of the public think it's important? Yes, I would say so. It would be more or less the same thing. There are, when when a, com a company wants to maximize their profits, and that's that's all good. That's the, that's the system we're living in. Yeah, that's the purpose. That's the purpose. So let's back it up for just a minute or two. Do we want an internet of things in a world, in a global digitized world, where we actually can live and share without being afraid of being used? I would like to see that world. And in order to do so, we need actually regulations that that, that, interact, that, that, that stipulates and then regulates the interaction between the social media platform and the subject as such. But as a core business, I again want to reach out with my ad, uh, advertising. So the responsibility is partly on the social media platform in this uh, example of Facebook, but also on the company to say, how do we do with consent? How do we actually uh, construct this? And, and, and is, is everybody reading it? Uh, do they understand what they consent to? Uh, let's just play back to the, 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 the initial question, the $20 issue. I don't think for a minute that any one of those who accepted the $20 to share the personal information understood the implication of it. And then it's on Facebook. So I should have a discussion this morning regarding what are the costs, and it was regarding rent. So it was actually looking at how much profit must a company give into the rents. And I told him that's actually the wrong way of looking at it because you need, uh, you, need, you need to have somewhere to have your company. So you need to pay rent. So you actually look at that as the cost of running the company. Yeah. It doesn't 
mark into your profits in the first place. Profits is after you have all those mandatory costs. Yeah, so cost to, to make business. Yes, yeah, in the first place. So it's the wrong way to look at it. Same thing goes with environment and now with privacy. This is something you need to do to be able to conduct your business. There will always be companies that don't bother, that does the minimum. Uh, hopefully GDPR can force those companies to actually start doing things. But it's something we always have to take care of. There will always be low-cost companies that, will don't care, that don't care about environment and will pollute a lot. But in some cases you, have to, you are forced to take the low-cost alternative. Do you think that privacy will be a social thing that those that have a high social class, a high social standard, they will value privacy and get the privacy because they can afford it, but a lot of people will not. That is actually a very interesting question. I believe, yes. I believe that the matter of privacy will be a, a class thing, uh, but whether it is maintaining privacy or sharing privacy, because I have seen tendency on social media platform that, oh, look at this profile X, um, this person lives uh, extraordinary life, it's extraordinary photos and everything. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a class thing of, of, of keeping privacy, but exposing yeah. privacy. Yeah, you select what you want. You or... select, actually, you present yourself in a way that is style. I believe that the future of movie stars or, or celebrities is going to be more of reality stars, YouTubers, or whatever that actually knows how to present themselves, how to, uh, to get more personal information out there that doesn't necessarily need to be the true thing about that subject. So yes, privacy will be a matter of class, but in a reverse kind of way.